In today's episode, you're gonna learn how to use Instagram to grow your podcast. Welcome to Podcasting Q&A, where you learn the best tips and strategies to launch, grow, and monetize your show. Anna and I are gonna be answering a question from Simone. Hello, my name is Simone. I have a podcast called Memoirs from Abroad. I'm trying to find the best way to market my travel podcast within Instagram mostly because there's so many travelers um, using Instagram to post pictures and videos. So I want to figure out how to engage more people through Instagram. And then how do I become more interactive with my listeners? Like I would like to engage my listeners more on Instagram. And if I ask a question, I would love for them to answer it more and more. Thank you so much. Thanks for your question, Simone. Now, Anna, I know that social media has a lot of potential when it comes to building an engaged audience, growing just the number of people who know who you are on the internet, and then also growing your podcast. But I know for a lot of people, Instagram can be really confusing too. Like you post things and they don't work and nobody comments and nobody likes or shares. What are some things that we should avoid when it comes to Instagram? Don't forget the social and social media. I think oftentimes people are utilizing these schedulers and all these other tools that have been created to help with the content creation process and social media management. But in actuality, they're hurting you. In the past, you could schedule something and let it post automatically. They could add the hashtags for you and all of those things, and it would be no problem. But now there's a whole process where the expectation is that you need to like engage at least two hours before you post something and two hours after. And so that means like this is how the algorithm shows that you're active, you're showing interest, and your audience feels engaged to what you're doing. So you don't want a situation to where you're just posting things and forgetting. You want to make sure you're actually being social, responding to comments, responding to DMs, and having interactive conversations with your audience. So if you want to get more organic reach with the things that you're posting, don't just log in, post the picture, put a comment, and then caption, and then you're done. Like, actually go through your previous posts, interact with people, answer direct messages, then post, then keep interacting with people to show that you're actually, like, engaged on the platform, and Instagram's going to reward that. Exactly. But I would actually say you want to be engaging with people on their own pages. And so it's not just like going through your comments, but it's actually going to their page. And so I always look at it like this. When you are engaging with someone and you're showing them that you like their content, they're in turn going to want to come visit your page and do the same thing. So it's really like a reciprocal thing where it's not just like, oh, give me, give me, give me, which is what a lot of people do on social media, where it's like, hey, I want you to come look at me and then I'm going to go. So, well, that doesn't really feel nice. And I think of it like in real life. In real life, you wouldn't just walk up and be like, hey, can you come like watch me over here? And then the person is like, uh, can I help you? <laughs> and so it's the same concept. I always say like treat social media as if the people were right in front of you and that will help when you're guiding for it. Gotcha. And that makes a lot of sense because I know for a lot of podcasters and they think I'm going to use social media, they're just thinking it's a means to an end so I can get more listeners on my podcast. Mm-hmm. And so the mindset is, well, how do I just get more followers? How many things do I need to post? Do I need to do stories, reels? Like whatever I got to do to make my page, my Instagram account larger, that will help me. And you're saying actually it's showing up to serve and actually engage in a more community-like fashion. That's ultimately what leads to people discovering you and wanting to engage with your content. Exactly. So in everything, you don't want it to be me, 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 me. Um, One, people can tell that that's all you're here for. Two, it shouldn't just be about your podcast. I think that's the other mistake that I see people make all the time, where it's like, hey, new podcast episode just launched. Use the link in my bio to listen. All right. Hello to you too, sir. How are you doing today? (laughs) Um, So you want to kind of go a little bit deeper than that. You want to provide like insights to yourself as the host. You want to kind of show some of the behind the scenes elements and sprinkle in your podcast episodes because that's the thing with podcasting. People are listening because they're connected with the host. You want to let them see more of you so they can feel that connection and in turn want to actually go support what you're doing. I know there's a lot of things that you can do on Instagram now to engage with the people that already follow your account and to find new followers, whether it's hashtags, regular posts, stories, reels. It seems like every other week there's a new feature on Instagram. What are the features that you're seeing that are working right now as far as building engagement with your audience and then also reaching new people? The number one thing is reels. Reels are really the big thing right now. And for some people, they spend 15 hours sometimes creating reels. It is a lot of work. However, it has huge results. And the things that do really well can be like behind the scenes and splicing in some music into it. 
it's very engaging and also slightly addictive. If you've ever just like <laughs> taking the time to like scroll through the reels, next thing you know, it's two o'clock in the morning and you're supposed to be in bed already. And so it's one of those things that it really pulls people in and it allows for easier discoverability because how the algorithm is working right now is that it's pulling up reels similar to each other based off of what your audience is already looking at. So if your audience is already engaging with somebody on that same niche topic, they're going to find you and they may not have ever known you existed. So that's something that I would highly recommend, whether it's doing one a month. I know they can feel awkward. They don't always have to be the dances because I know for me, I'm like, I'm not doing that. Um, but there's other ways that you can do it to where it feels really engaging, but also provides insights for your audience. Another thing is guides. And a lot of people are not utilizing this. And so guides is something that rolled out, I'd say probably earlier this year. It allows for you to kind of put together exactly that, a guide on a specific topic. So let's say you have a doula podcast. And I don't know why this is what I always utilize as my example, <laughs> but it's my go-to. But let's say you have a doula podcast and you're able to find all these resources about you know, preparing for the hospital. You can easily put that into a guide and this can be other people's content. It's not necessarily something you've created. It's other content that you found that is super helpful, super engaging that you can put into a guide that is now on your page. Well, this increases your reach because as their stuff gets more viewership, it helps you kind of be found as well. So I really like guides for helping you organize your content, but also the content that you're looking at that your audience may like as well. Those two items I highly recommend and then the other thing would be automated DMs. And so this is something that my audience has always been like, oh my God, I love that every time, like when I first started following you, you personally sent me something saying, welcome, so happy to have you here. Here are some things. They don't recognize that it's actually a bot, but it, it makes people feel like engaged, like that little bit. And this person has been following us for like a year. They felt really good about that. But the reason for this isn't just for the warm welcome. It's also because of the fact that you have to tell your audience what you want them to do when they follow you. And so usually people have to hear it seven different times. So that can be in your description. That could be the automated DMs. So that could be the welcome message, or it could be somebody that you see that, okay, wait, they're really following and paying attention to X, Y, and Z. And so by having these different touch points, it allows for your audience to know, oh, this is what I'm here for, not just to consume content, but to also kind of take it one step further and head over to um, your podcast listening platform. So it sounds like if you want to use Instagram to grow your podcast, you need to have like a strategy for Instagram and not just treat it like a billboard to spam people with messages about new episodes. Correct. And so before we wrap up, is there a particular software that you recommend for the automated DMs? Because I know there's software out there for like scheduling posts, like the buffers of the world. But what chat software do you recommend for people that want to have that welcome message that goes out automatically? Is that something right inside of Instagram or is that a third party software? One of the tools that I've utilized is called Instazood. I like it because of the fact that it really sends out quite a bit, but I really like the filters. One, I like using automated DMs for new followers, but also when we have something really big coming up, whether that's an event or an upcoming um, big launch, a new season, those type of things. The reason I pointed out what we use it for is don't use these all the time. Because after a while, you're going to lose your audience. They're going to feel like, okay, wait, you're spamming me with DMs. So you want to use it for special occasions. In those instances, Instazood allows for you to have an option to say if somebody has not been active for several weeks, if they haven't posted anything, those type of things. So that that way you're not wasting your money. And for me, that's really important because keeping within budget matters. So we'll leave a link to that software in the description. You can go check it out, see if it's something that you want to utilize for your own Instagram account and utilize these tips. Definitely have an Instagram strategy. It can be a powerful social media platform to help you build an engaged audience. You just got to do it the right way. And now that Anna has shared all these bomb tips, you know exactly how to do it.